Welcome to your favorite YouTube channel, Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. And we are a daily video channel about comic books. We have probably looked at your favorite comic book or creator. We have 1,500 videos. So go to the Cartoonist Kayfabe homepage on YouTube, hit that little magnifying glass, and put in the title that you would like to see a video about or the artist that is your favorite. And if we don't have a video featuring that, leave a comment below so that we can add it to our reading list and cover it eventually. We are also have Cartoonist Kayfabe Patreon. There are three different levels there that will get you access to our videos earlier. And at the King Kayfaber level, you will get all of our videos first, including sitting in on the recording session. That means whenever we show off a book like we're going to show today, you can be the first one trying to track down a copy because some of these books are rare, hard to find. They disappear and they get more expensive as time passes. So uh, check out our Patreon and see what level of the Cartoonist Kayfabe Patreon suits you best. This qualifies, huh, Jimmy? Absolutely. So we are looking at a fascinating piece of comics history here, The Adventures of Black Eldridge by Ovid P. Adams, a cartoonist that I had not heard of before this. This is a borrowed copy from uh, Dealer to the Stars, Jason Hamlin. We saw this in a previous video. I think we might have showed it whenever we were visiting Jason Hamlin's uh, comic book area and uh, looking at some of his outstanding titles, known for getting stuff that I've never seen before, indie stuff, and in this case, very much an underground comic that was published as a Black Panther comic. You know, I don't know if Ovid P. Adams was a Black Panther. Um, would not surprise me, considering the content of this comic that we're going to get into, but it comes out in 1970. This is your publisher out of San Francisco, and you can see, you know, it's a black and white comic, very much in the vein of those underground comics that were maybe starting to taper off, maybe starting to actually start up 1970. That would have been pretty early on in the underground comics movement, and this is the heart of it, San Francisco. So uh, I think this artist looked around and said, let's let's make a comic about something that he's clearly passionate about. Yeah, for sure, man. And uh, the last panel's the cover. Yes. <laughs> You know, it's, it's interesting, too. Like, you see, it's almost cut off the artwork down here. We would see this in a lot of comics in that people would draw them at a size that may not be suited to that weird 2 by 3 ratio that comic books are. And I wonder if that's what you're seeing here. Totally. Um, often you would see that with underground comics or self-published comics where they're just a little bit different than the standard comic book size. And it's because you were not part of an infrastructure of comics. This wasn't printed by the companies that print Marvel and DC Comics. This is printed probably by some local printer in San Francisco, and it's almost comic book size. Yeah, totally. Like, like the, uh, the comic book size is a very weird contrivance, and, and nobody can agree on how that size was created, because if you have your own press, it's usually eight pages to create a signature. You fold once, you fold once, you trim the top, and you tr trim the side but the way that the trim is like on the side for comics it's it's like an inch and a half too much like there's there's scrap right and it uh it's a very confusing thing when you when you see the typical layouts of what print has to offer so maybe this is just with no uh you know no scrap very possible and right away like one of the reasons this caught my eye is I think it's a very striking image, but you see like ink washes as well as like heavy hatching yeah. and stuff. So a uh, graphic artist that I think probably works a lot and is able to bring in some of the uh, non-comics making elements because that wash is not something that you see a lot in the uh, underground comics at least. Totally. And you don't really see it on the inside. It looks like almost like almost like um, rapidograph everywhere. So Eldridge, I assume, is a reference to Eldridge Cleaver, yeah, of course. The, uh, the Minister of Information in the Black Panther Party. Um, I don't think his last name is used anywhere in here, but that was my guess, just kind of like trying to get a little bit of context for what we're looking at here. It's fun to think about because 70, like, would um, black exploitation movies even be being made at this point? Was Sweet, Sweet, Sweet Back? Back was out. I think Shaft is 1970, okay. um, I think. So, yeah, that is definitely, you know, something that's that's ramping up as well yeah so this fits into that because like that title it's a very hyperbolic title that has like a lot of good baggage to it that that makes you curious you know yeah it's fascinating and it's one of those things that comics don't always get credit for but like i've heard it described as a low barrier of entry and what it means is you can make a comic book it's relatively inexpensive and it's relatively low tech which means almost anybody can make a comic book you yeah. know compared to say a movie yeah it's really time you know like the the time is the equalizer and you just got to put put in that time and sometimes that means like put in the time to get good enough to make something that is readable and this fits the bill 
Cartoonist Kayfabe is brought to you by the books that we make. Jimmy has forthcoming Street Angel Princess of Poverty. It's a good companion piece to go along with Street Angel Deadliest Girl Alive. He's been self-publishing lately. True Crime Funny is 1986 zine, BW zine. If you didn't get these at Comic-Cons, he's going to put them uh, live on his website in uh, late October. And the long out-of-print Hulk grand design. Scoop up those cop comics. I have the Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus coming to you. 10th anniversary. Make sure you scoop it up. Best book I ever made. The current focus has been Red Room. There are two trade paperbacks of Red Room that are out there. Trigger Warnings and the Anti-Social Network. Just wrapped up the four issues of the final season, Crypto Killers, with the third issue containing a backup feature of my forthcoming daily comic strip. And X-Men Grand Design Trilogy coming out in November, collecting long out-of-print uh, X-Men Grand Design books that I put together. Before you is a healthy bibliography of a bunch of stuff that we have out on the stands today. Now that we're done paying the bills, back to the video. really like the artwork, too. It's, it's pretty solid throughout this this issue and it fits in with that black and white like the like the old underground motif you know like there there are like traditional uh what you call it like underground cartoonists that, that have these chops you know that kind of lettering style but it's pretty cool that he gets a little iconic plays with camera angles a little bit yeah like i said when i looked First up um view. when i looked up this artist ovid adams like i found prints and things of his so you know i think he's a guy who probably better known for his other artworks than this comic, but a guy who does more art than just this comic too. You know, this isn't a guy of our generation that's growing up reading comics yeah. and decides to make comics that look like other comics. It's a guy who's coming from more of an art background, but a printmaking background. Like most of what I found from him is prints. So it is reproduction and things that would lend themselves to doing a work like this. So our story is this uh, African-American artist in Chicago, and now he's driving home, I think to the Bay Area and uh, stops along the way at this antique kind of road road shop where he finds this drum very happy with it wants to add it to his collection does some bartering with the uh the woman who is selling the stuff but unfortunately he's going to be confronted by a very racist husband who comes out the man yeah and uh which by the way this fall this follows the uh, black exploitation tropes man yeah where, definitely like, the, the white man is the villain definitely Man, it, it, it feels like this guy should have done other comics. Doesn't it feel like not someone's first comic? There are elements that may be a little bit first comic-y, but overall, like, that's a pretty complex spread compared to what I think of as a lot of the, uh, at least the black and white explosion comics of the 80s. Yeah, for Maybe sure. Maybe the underground comics a little more developed like this. But man, for, for a guy who I don't think did other comics, pretty good stuff here. Yeah, the chops are there, and... Uh... You know, comics is propaganda. Like that that's what the, that's what this is, you know, like this is this is like an information guide or something. Yeah, so here's your shop owner coming out with uh, <laughs> a strange looking gun. He almost has devil horns, man. And, he does. And, and you'll hear that language about the devil and stuff like that. That hatching is really amazing though. It's very tight, very fine pen line hatching there. But he shoots our guy in the knee, blowing off his leg pretty much, you know, like what he shoot me with a cannon. It's 357 Magnum, at the editor note, which again is another staple of comics writing. Yeah. Probably one that we don't even do anymore, but uh, certainly something that dotted the uh, Marvel comics of my youth. All right. So somewhere in North Africa, word gets back to Black Eldridge that, uh, you know, the story of this artist and uh, it's just, that's enough for him. He's going to settle this score. So he sneaks back on a, on a jet back into America with this letter that he sends to the local newspaper, basically uh, telling people to take responsibility for this. I'm Who's responsible? I'm loving this lettering. This is an incredible page. You know, it looks like he drew that plane uh, without penciling. You know, it looks like a sketchbook thing. And just all this lettering all over the place is real, real attractive imagery. You see him move through these different styles from a very sketchy, loose background to, you know, solid spotted blacks. It's uh, definitely a graphic artist. You know, this is not a not an amateur artist that's drawing this. And like some of these kind of things with atmospheric hatching in the background. Yeah. That'd be something that I would almost see in like Guy Davis, Vince Locke caliber work. Yeah. This exact kind of strokes feel like uh, those 60s crumb sketchbooks. You see police headquarters. So uh, these guys have read this letter and they're they're kind of pretty confident in themselves. Let's, right. let's put it that way. Although the leader of the church here 
maybe a little bit more nervous. Pulls out pulls out a crucifix like he's, like he's fighting a vampire. Is it, is it, when did Blackula? This is this is not Blade Vampire Hunter. When did Blackula come out? <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's <laughs> maybe influenced by this one. <laughs> Should have dates on all of these movies to see exactly what was out at that time. Um, this was a page that we were talking about off camera where it's almost, it's very cinematic, but it's almost like something that could go wrong where it would have been like one image, but they're staggered a little bit each one. So it's clearly separate panels and no gutters like the traditional comic book gutter is not a part of this language. I bet you that was a, uh, that was a discovery he made for himself and clearly having chops like with graphic design art making, he, like he knows about tangents. So it's, it's a, it's a um, very calculated move, but it, you know, still looks, uh, you know, on the surface real quick, it looks like one piece. Yeah. It's a fascinating page. I found myself lingering on it quite a bit uh, going through this book this week. I thought this hand is just exquisite. Mm -hmm. Really loved the rendering on that hand. Good jacket too. You know, it kind of reads as that leather texture. Yeah, yeah, le leather leather can be dicey, man. Like it's it's a tough thing to make, the tough thing to uh, convey in pen and ink. Multimedia. <laughs> now we're putting photographs in of uh, atrocities. You know, again from the Black Panther standpoint of atrocities to African Americans. Yeah. Fascinating document. I wonder how many of these were produced. Yeah. You know, it feels offset printed, so I would guess at least a thousand. Right. And uh, how about that for your graphic? And does the swoosh, the yes. sound effect that we all draw at some point? Goes Basil Wolverton with it, chops the dude's head off. I mean, this is this is a you know this is Amwat, you know Ben Mera energy. Yeah. Then back into the blackness of night, like a panther, this black warrior did slip. Yeah, it's such an interesting image the way that it all goes because it's almost like he's a bat or or an angel. Yeah. Yeah, almost a wing behind him. But again, like very interesting drawing marks. You know, that knight is not like hatched. It's, it's, it's almost Vincent Van Gogh in exactly. line work. Yeah, Starry Knight. Uh, but also there's a psychedelia to the lines because you could imagine you've seen color fields like that in like the Rick Griffin posters and the Victor Moscoso posters. It's These are very timely marks of the era, you know, probably even a little dated, you know, like the, in the 60s, you would see those kind of swirlies and... I'm going to be very curious in the comments Yeah, who tracks down copies of this and who knows about it and who knows more yeah, information. Too. We literally had comments from, uh, from Carl Burks's granddaughter this past week. So, uh, we've had comments from, you know, Russ Cochran's family and people related to the people that, that we talk about. So, you know, there could be some connection that, that it adds adds more light to the to the image i love hand done uh coupons me too i'm, I'm a, a sucker that. for that stuff and you can see these posters posters by ovid p adams so the artist of this comic also you want to promote your own stuff this is a playbook out of every alternative comic you know like what else does the artist have available and i think combined with this marcus bookstore which may be a very legendary place uh wouldn't surprise me um interesting book whenever i was googling it i found copies of it at uh penn state and at uh, VCU. So, you know, something that I do think is in some of these archives, these academic archives, as a uh, historically noteworthy, interesting comic book, and one that, honestly, I'm surprised I didn't know about until just recently. Because mm -hmm. this feels like the type of outsider art comic, you know, that, that interests me. Yeah, you wonder if, like, uh, Paul Gravatt even knows about it. Like, what was it in that Leather Nun and other stories... Uh, collection of all of the oddities in, in comics history because like this this might you know spark his interest you know what i'm very curious now if it was in there and it might be something because like whenever i got hold of that book and we have a video on that book i would go through and i would look for all that stuff yeah. and some of its foreign editions and things that i just found nothing mm -hmm. like there was no google response um this feels like it would be perfectly in place in a book like that and i can't remember if it's in there or not but now that you mention it it feels like i may have seen it in one of those kinds of you know, weird comics collections. It tracks. It makes sense for it to be in there. So, you know, part of the reason I was excited to show this off is really to hear the discussion, to hear what people know about this comic, what they know about this artist. And uh, just in general, I feel like this is that exciting, like, make your own comics. You know, this is DIY comics, which really, by and large, are my favorite comics. Uh, this one kind of stands out as being like a cool example of that. Totally. Good to go. I am. Okay, favorites, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell so that we can notify you when new videos 
are available. We are a daily YouTube channel and we have about 1500 videos up there as we speak. We might have talked about some of your favorites. Uh, the way that you can fi find that out is to hit the little magnifying glass on the front page of the Cartoonist Kayfabe YouTube channel. Search for your faves. If we talked about them, check out those videos. If we did not, you have to let us know in the comments what comics you want us to cover in the future because these videos are daily. The, car the King Kayfabers on our Patreon get access to all the videos before anybody else and they're kicking it with us right now in the chat room as we speak so they get access to all the comics that we talk about on the aftermarket before anybody else and something like this black eldritch you've seen it go for what a couple hundred bucks i saw it up to 850 yeah so uh you know like they're getting the cheapest copies i saw one for 50 and that's gone when the king cave members took that one already <laughs> uh so it you know the subscription pays for itself before you is a pretty healthy sample of our bibliography over the p past couple of years but we are functioning working cartoonists and uh, we need you to check out our, our current books. Jimmy, what do you have? Street Angel, Princess of Poverty is my next release. This will be coming out from Image Comics in November. And it collects all of the Street Angel comics that are not in Deadly Girl Alive. So you want to get both of these books. You'll have a complete set of all my Street Angel comics. But you need to let your store know to order a copy of Princess of Poverty for you. My contribution to the Grand Design series is Hulk Grand Design. This is sold out at the distribution level, which means if you want a copy, buy it whenever you see it off the shelf at your local comic store. If they still have copies or online, wherever you can find a copy, because once it's gone, I don't know what Marvel's plans are. Uh, they don't keep stuff in print, so maybe a long time before you can pick that one up. I've also been self-publishing. You see the 1986 zine celebrating the, uh, the greatest year in comics history, the BW zine celebrating the black and white explosion, the DIY comics that I love so much, and True Crime Funnies, an anthology of nonfiction stories. These will all be for sale on October 26th on jimrug.com, kind of a holiday fall sale. I am stocking up to make sure that I'll be able to meet all the orders is why it's a little bit of a delay. But mark it on your calendar October 26th. If you can't wait that long, Join me on patreon.com slash jimrug where you can read and download a lot of my zines and mini comics that have been out of print. The time is here, guys. Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus is coming to us uh, within a couple of weeks uh, in mid-October, actually. 10-year anniversary of Hip Hop Family Tree, 50th anniversary of Hip Hop Culture, and this is the best book that I've made in my career to date. I need you to add it to your bookshelves, and uh, you got to let your comic shop know to order this comic for you ASAP because uh, we, we made our print run, you know, and it'll be a, a while before reprints are had and a lot of people pre-ordered this stuff online. Now, uh, make sure you uh, hit up your, your shop and if they scoop it up for you, make sure you, you grab it and pay for it uh, expeditiously. Not the only holiday effort coming out. In November comes the X-Men Grand Design Trilogy trade paperback. Uh, this is going to collect all of my X-Men Grand Design work. Uh, three big Ed Piscor shaped volumes came out earlier. And uh, some of those books are out of print. So it's your way to get uh, your hands on all of my X-Men Grand Design work. Red Room is the current project that has just completed. There are two trade paperbacks of that out there. Trigger Warnings and the Antisocial Network. And it's Red Room Crypto Killers that has just recently saw the light of day completely with a four issue run and it's this third issue that if you scoop that up there's a backup feature called latchkey kids and these are the characters that are going to be the focus of my daily comic strip uh that i'm serializing exclusively on my patreon right now uh, patreon.com slash ed piscor three bucks get you the the archive and uh, all of red room is up there plus uh every tuesday i put up new latchkey well it's called switchblade shorties now and there's going to be uh, a serialization online to the wider world, probably starting January 1st, 2024. Now, you just got the rundown of all of our new books and our past works, but there are a few other ways to contribute to directly to the Cartoonist Kayfabe cause. You can subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts, merchandise, hats, mugs, stickers, and lots more at our spread shop. That link is also under this video in the show notes. All good ways to support the channel. Give them those marching orders, Jimmy, and we'll be on our way. Make more comics.